Hey Mitches, so today I am finally doing a video on how to buy crystals and my top tips for building your crystal collection if this is something that you would like to do. Now there are a whole lot of um, ethical considerations that also need to be made. Um, I know that there is a lot of talk about um, ethical crystals and things like that. Um, look, but it's also extremely hard to know if crystals have truly been mined ethically um, and that's just something that um, you need to kind of decide for yourself if that's something that you are willing to buy something that says it's ethically mined when perhaps it might not have been um, or if you just want to avoid buying crystals entirely and that's also totally fine. Um, in that case this might not be the video for you that's completely fine. But if you are interested in buying crystals and expanding your crystal collection, these are some of my tips. And not all of them involve buying them um, brand new either, if you can call them brand new. So, all right, so my very first tip, and I mentioned that in my budget witch tips video, is to look into um, Facebook groups, which are for people which are into gem and mineral fossicking, um, particularly if you can try and find a local group, because that way you might be able to actually go finding crystals on your on your own or with a group of other people, um, or you might even be able to purchase them for quite cheaply from these people because they do it as a hobby, they're not doing it professionally. Um, so yeah, that's also an option. These people can also give you tips if you are interested in doing it on your own and they can help you with crystal identification as well. Another one is to look into when and where your local crystal and gem shows are. So gem shows are amazing because often they sell crystals at wholesale prices. So I'm gonna show you a couple of pieces that I've bought from gem shows before and I'll let you have a guess how much they were. So. This is one of my favorite pieces, one of my pride and joys. This is a crocodile or an alligator, I guess depending on where you live, and it is sitting on a slab of this black looking crystal. This is actually tourmalinated quartz. You can kind of see it here. And so yeah, this it's got like rough tourmalinated quartz on the bottom and it's polished on the top into this carving. How much do you think this was? This cost me $150. And it is sizable and it is heavy. Now I haven't seen anything else like this around, but I would hazard a guess that it would cost me a lot more than $150. So this is just one thing which I bought from a gem and mineral show, which I thought was an absolute bargain. I also purchased this is one of my favorite amethyst pieces it's a chevron amethyst which you can tell by this little triangle shape and it's a point it's been partially it's been polished on the top and it's been polished on the bottom so that it actually um stands upright on its own and again how much do you think this cost me so i don't remember the exact price but i'm pretty sure it was around about 20 to 25 dollars which i thought was a bargain as well. So yeah, gem and mineral fairs are a really good place to buy um, crystals from at really affordable prices. And that's because you're often buying from people that have either mined it themselves or um, know the people that mined it themselves. My next tip is to join witchy buy sell swap groups and keep an eye out for if people are um, selling bundles of crystals. They might be downsizing their collection. They might have come across um, like somebody else's collection and they're trying to pass it on. Um, things like that pop up. And so you can buy a whole lot of crystals for much cheaper than if you bought them individually just because people kind of want to get rid of them. Um, so that's another option for buying crystals. Having said that, if you buy crystals this way, you might get a whole lot of crystals that you don't know the names of, and that's fine. You can ask in Facebook groups, um, things like that. There's also a lot of really good websites you can use to help try and figure out what your crystals are. And now, probably the biggest tip that I can give you, and it's not an easy one, but that is to familiarize yourself with the average prices of crystals. So the reason that I even know that these pieces I've showed you were for a really cheap price is because I know what the average price is of, say, a chunk of amethyst or amethyst of particular quality, particular shapes. Um, 
having said that as well tumbled stones will always be cheaper than um, say like bigger pieces which have been carved because of course they require less effort carvings are really difficult um, and very detailed so carvings will of course always cost you a lot more than say tumbled stones um, the other thing is as well that when you get like rough pieces of crystal these will also be cheaper because pretty much they just come straight out of the ground they clean them and then they sell them whereas something like this they would have had to have cut a certain way and then they've partly polished it so that of course it's going to cost more also obviously the difference between this piece and this piece by the way this was about 20 25 dollars and this one was 10 dollars um for instance this has the triangle shape on it which is much more desirable than say one that doesn't um this one is a darker color of amethyst um this one actually has smoky quartz in part of it so some people might see that as a flaw for me as a witch i'm just like yay give me more crystals <laughs> um so yeah you can often find rough pieces for cheaper than pieces that have been polished so that's something else to keep in mind um along that line this is a piece of sudulite now you can see the bits of purple in it are like the actual bits of sudulite the bits of rock next to it are probably not sudulite i don't know if they're any kind of special crystal um, because of that this piece was much cheaper than buying say my polished piece of sudulite i'll show that to you so this is my polished piece of sudulite it's not very purple it's more kind of bluey and red guess how much this cost me this cost me 45 dollars whereas this one cost me 20. And that's just because this is a polished piece it's a higher grade as well there's more of those desirable colors in it whereas this is considered lower quality um, and it's a rough piece which is why it's cheaper so it's something else to keep in mind if you're wanting to get crystals for your collection as a witch you maybe don't need it to be like a polished tumble you might be able to get like a raw piece and you might actually find that that's something you would prefer to work with i'm actually preferring more of my pieces to be more like this than like this nowadays but that's just personal preference and likewise so with that amethyst that had bits of smoky quartz in it sometimes that can actually also increase the price of a crystal so for example this is lipidolite with pink tourmaline inclusions that pink part of the top whereas this is lipidolite just lipidolite and which one do you think is more expensive this one's very sparkly this is one of my favorite pieces so this piece here cost me i think it was less than 15 dollars whereas this piece here cost me over 20 dollars and this was many many years ago because it's got the pink tourmaline inclusions and because it is a carved piece because it is a heart shape whereas this is a rough piece so yeah it's just up to you what you would prefer and what your budget is the other thing and this might sound a little bit strange is that shops online are usually more expensive than physical shops no i didn't muddle up my words online shops that sell crystals are usually more expensive than brick and mortar stores now this doesn't make a lot of sense because usually it's the opposite right but i think the reason for that is that these brick and mortar crystal shops particularly the ones that have been around for years and years if not decades like some of my favorites they're not cashing in on a trend they're doing this because they genuinely love crystals and minerals and so they haven't artificially inflated their prices to make huge profits they know what kind of profit margin they need to be sustainable and that's generally what they keep doing um, whereas some of these online shops they actually are buying crystals at retail prices and then reselling them for higher than the prices they paid for them um, or they might be going to wholesalers that are overcharging them things like that so it really does pay to shop around and there are some good sites online which i will recommend later on um, however i'm very very careful when buying online um, for a few reasons one of the reasons is that some stores that sell you crystals they will have a disclaimer which will say um, something along the lines of the crystal that you receive may not be as pictured and that's their way of saying they're going to send you a crystal that doesn't look like the photo now <laughs> i'm going to show you an example 
So I purchased this crystal from a website which I'm not going to name and it was supposed to be Cambaba Jasper. Now I did a quick Google search and I cannot find any pieces of Cambaba Jasper that look like this. Um, I paid $26 for this and I will show you the photo of the crystal that I was expecting to receive. Now what's interesting about this particular online store, they are quite well known, they are also a wholesaler, is this particular picture that they're using, they're now using to sell $40 crystals. Now I'm wondering if the $40 crystals look anything like the photo or if they look more like this, but uh, to say that I was disappointed when I received this would be an understatement. Um, yeah, so let's just say they're not in our shop directory for Australian witchcraft for very good reasons. So when I buy crystals online, I will only buy if they are if they have a photo of the specific piece or crystal that I'm purchasing. So not every shop does this, and I understand it's a bit of a logistical nightmare. But I won't buy crystals anymore unless I know that the crystal in the photo is the exact crystal that I'm going to receive and because of that I genu generally only buy larger pieces online then. So I'm going to show you an example. So this is one of my favorite crystals. This is purple fluorite and judging by the banding on it I'm pretty sure it's actually Tiffany stone which is quite rare um, and quite expensive um, because it's got these like swirls there. Um, and so I purchased this crystal, this specific crystal, because it had the specific photo, it had the size dimensions, it had the weight, it had all of that. And so I knew exactly what I was buying. I knew exactly what to expect. And so, yeah, that worked out really well. Um, and I have done that with many other pieces before as well. So that's my rule when buying online now. I'll only buy if they have a photo of the specific crystal, if they have the size dimensions, if they have the weight because that then tells me that they are being really transparent and they know exactly what they are talking about. And part of the reason for this is, like I mentioned with this crystal, this is actually not the first time this has happened where I've bought crystals and then the shop has turned around and said, well, our disclaimer says your crystal may not be as pictured. And that's really frustrating as a customer, particularly when the crystals that they show you are actually larger. So yeah, I don't buy from a lot of online shops anymore for that reason. I have a separate video with shop recommendations for Australia in the Australian Witchcraft Facebook group. I decided not to include it as part of this video because it made it very, very long. So if you're interested in shop recommendations for Australia, um, take a look in the Facebook group and I'll pop it up in there. One more thing is that if you are traveling, it is worth checking out your town's local visitor centers or gift shops. So for example, I found this piece which I always forget the name of, um, but I found this in a gift shop in the Snowy Mountains. So this was a gift shop in the Snowy Mountains. Um, they had a whole lot of crystals there and they were all really cheap and I think they were all locally um, found as well. Um, so this is another really good option. So um, a lot of like visitor centers, um, they might have crystals and things which are mined in the local area and they will be cheaper than if you purchase them online. So gift shops are also another option, particularly if you like going on road trips and things like that. Let me know if you knew about this before, if you've got any other tips to share, um, or if you've got any um, favorite shops that you like to go purchasing crystals from. So yeah. Hopefully you found this helpful and I hope you have a wonderful magical day. I'll see you next time. Bye.